Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of my Thief Gold playthrough on Expert Difficulty. Today we're going to be doing Lost City. We have to find the Talisman of Fire, the second talisman that we need to open up the cathedral, the Honda Cathedral, to get the eye. We need to get 2,000 gold and we need to get out with the Keeper medallions. So let's get into it. Um, what I wanted to say off the bat right here is that this is going to be the second mis mission in which I save, so this mission actually has some little bit of save scumming and the reason for that is because this mission also has a lot of platforming and a lot of random elements to it so it was turning out to be quite a chore to do this without making a single save so this mission will actually have saves in it and you'll be able to tell uh, when I made cuts um, I fade in between uh, cuts where I died or cuts where I you know cuts think cut things for time so um, when they come up I'll mention them but uh so yeah, this, this mission, unfortunately, I had to make some saves. Um, it just was too frustrating to keep trying to do it um, without saving. So right here off the bat, at the very beginning, before you uh, head down into the water, you're going to shoot a rope arrow into the wall, not into the uh, ceiling, because the ceiling doesn't have, isn't, you know, climbable, but the wall is, because it's wooden. So, and for this one, you want to shoot it right about the window because you want to get out. So that rope, that roof that we want to climb on there to the left uh, is like sloped. So if you don't kind of get over it, you're going to get stuck and then you're going to fall back down. So climbing back up to take one of the rope arrows and which is the lost city, just right here in the water. You take out the key that we got, I believe, in the Han Cathedral mission and we're in to the lost city. So. This is the entrance. Um, as you can, as you saw in the beginning of the starting screen, um, I bought a breathe, uh, breathing potion. Um, you don't really need it. You can survive this swim without it, but it is a little bit easier. And if you have the gold to spare, um, you know you can go ahead and do it. So not a big deal. is pretty cool because the lore of this mission is that you're exploring this ancient civilization that's kind of beneath the city that Thief takes place in and Thief already has a very you know mysterious and kind of enigmatic mythology so I think adding this whole lost civilization is like a really cool like story element. Um, I don't think this mission is, is super great just because it's just more uh, platforming not really stealth based and you know if you've seen the previous videos I'm more of a fan of the the burglary type missions where you just break into a place and steal stuff and get out and deal with more human enemies. I just find that AI to be more, make for more compelling gameplay, but I don't mind the, the tomb plundering. Uh, this mission's kind of a, a mix between like Bone Horde and, you know, more of a traditional mission because there is, you know, actual enemies. There's mages in this How mission that you can knock out. This place a secret. Get the two goblets there on the windowsill. As soon as you fall in, and this building is is crawling with uh, bricks. So you wanna, you can take them out. A couple of them you can take out. In, you know, one kill if you're stealthy, but a few of them I think are, are pretty much impossible to stealth kill. Let me get this one right here. I should also mention too, this is going to come up later, but mention it now, is this is one of the few missions where you are allowed to kill uh, human enemies on expert difficulty, so you'll see later, um, you're permitted to kill the mages and it's, it's, not, a, it's not a mission fail, so this is one of a few missions I think in the series where you can play on expert and you can kill, you can kill humans. And be careful not to get trapped by the Burks. Um, you're kind of using this wall to, you know, leverage them and you know, avoid some of that poisonous gas. Normally, I wouldn't come down here, but there is some loot down here, and I want to grab as much pot as possible. You'll, you'll see. I didn't get, I didn't get 100% loot, but I got a good amount, so. This is one of the reasons why I want to come down here for that reason.
There's a little diamond up on this hill right there as soon as you exit the temple. So when I make sure you grab that, it's pretty easy to miss. Anybody home? Grab the fire over there on the roof. Gold plate there on the floor. Not not too many pieces of loot in these houses. Most of them are pretty empty, but there's a few spots where you can grab some fires and some loot. Including this one right here. You want to jump across, fall through the roof, and be careful not to hit the lava. Um, that's one of also the reasons why I saved in this mission, too, is because the lava is an instant kill, and sometimes if you slip or you don't grab a ledge and you fall in, you'll you'll die instantly when you touch the lava. So that's another thing that makes this mission hard to do. Like on one one run without saving is is the lava it plays into the platforming randomness. Tr there on the floor, just avoiding the bricks. Um, those those little fire fireballs, I don't remember their name, but um, the fireballs in this level that you'll see, they actually can kill, they'll actually fight the birds, which is pretty neat. So if they come into contact with each other, uh, the fireballs are going to win because they can only be uh, killed by water arrows, I believe. I don't think the gas does anything to them. Climb up this wall here. Again, lava you can avoid. Those are the fireballs I was talking about. They shoot out, you know, projectile fire, and um, those are those will take a good chunk of your health, especially on expert. It's probably like a one or two shot, depending on your health. And there's a piece of loot there and fire arrow. So there's something in all three of those buildings across from the gate. So you want to make sure you explore all three of those. I haven't been reading any lore text in this video, as you saw me just pick up a scroll. I just feel like it's just tedious and time consuming, you know, and plus like reading the lore and stuff like that is part of the, the fun of it. You can see right there I just made a cut, um, I died, uh, I just wanted to cut it out. You know, I, don't really, I don't really think people want to see death in the game, but there is a, if one's funny or interesting I might do this, but still it's just, uh, I think I get hit by one of these fireballs. Okay, uh, yeah, those, all those blue gems, they look like, uh, they look like they can't be rooted, but they certainly can, so I'm gonna move all those from the wall. Another reason too I think this mission doesn't quite work is the atmosphere is great and the story behind it's great, but it's pretty linear too. You're pretty much just walking. You start out the, the level map is basically you walk in a straight line, you get to the city, and there's like a circle, and then each there's a path you know in the circle like the spokes of a wheel, basically. and then you just go like back and forth, and then you have to backtrack you know through the through the parts of the level, so that's another reason why I think this level doesn't quite work is the backtracking and kind of the linear nature. I think the visit is the best when it's you know, non-linear and giving the player choice on how they want to approach things. This level there's really not much choice on like, what you do and you can kill these things or not kill them and some things like that, but in terms of like planning your exits and entrances and stuff, there's really nothing you can do. <laughs> 
something to us? Hmm. Nothing. Nothing. <coughs> Always, in my opinion, the air mages are the deadliest. I actually was trying to shoot the air mage there and I hit the earth mage. But the air mages are the deadliest because their projectiles can actually um, go back and forth. Like they're almost like uh, heat seeking, you know, what have you. They're very hard to avoid, unlike, say, the fireballs, which you can just duck around the corner. But the air mages' projectiles can fall in around the corner, so if you see a group of mages, I definitely go for the air mage first of anybody. And I made a save right there because you know, this is another platforming part where it's easy to fall off the rope and die, and you know, sometimes you will grab the rope. And you know, I think the grab mechanic works pretty well in this game, especially for its age and how many other mechanics that the game is juggling, but there is you know, glitches and accidents where you, know, you won't grab the legend and you'll fall and die, so I'm make a save there. Technically, this area is optional, but that key that we just picked up is for what's well, actually a lever, and it allows us to move the drawbridge oh, yeah, that will allow dangerous. us to access a part that we do need to do easier. So it's not necessary, but it makes your life easier. <coughs> Plus, there's like a, a good, good bit of loot in this uh, temple, so. Have been breached. You see, one for the fire mage. That's the thing too. You know, fire is good for taking out enemies, but fire is going to work on fire mages, which is nice against this threat. Um, and you know, makes sense. Return to the eternal the fire, fire invader. Practicing fire. You know, no! Magic art of fire, so fire is probably should work on them, so. I have to see it for the air mage. There's three pieces of loot in that room where they were talking, so make sure you grab those. Nothing in here, but it looks like there is, but not. It's the room that maybe hide bodies or avoid detection from the patrolling guard. like spokes that lead out to these other areas. And I left that death in. Uh, that's what I'm talking about in terms of the platforming, you know, not grabbing the rope and, you know, you fall and die, so... I it, left it in because it wasn't super long and didn't really interrupt the flow of the video that much, so left it in. Down in there, I got it my first time through, but 
that little campsite there is where one of the medallions is that you need to not beat the level. So I guess actually we did, I stand corrected earlier, I said we didn't need to come over there, but I guess we didn't need to go into the temple, but we needed to go to the campsite at least to get one of the two keeper medallions to fulfill that objective, which is I believe only a, a harder expert level objective. On normal difficulty, I don't think you have to get the keeper medallions, I think you just have to get the talisman in and some loot. See, I made a cut there too because I had. I think I backtracked actually when I cut it out of the mission. I went back into the building. Um, I thought I had missed a piece of loot or something, but I didn't, so I wanted to cut that out because it was just a tedious part of the video that could be cut. Another thing about this level too that you'll find is there's a bunch of masks hidden around the level and, uh, and that's you can see we're on the path to the main talisman objective right there. But um, like I was saying there's a bunch of masks in the mission that you can, I think you can pick them up but none of them count as loot and uh, it's really cool because they become a pretty, uh, pretty major plot point in the sequel so I think it's interesting how, you know, I don't know if they were thinking about that necessarily in this game about what they're going to do for the sequel. Um, I had heard that they didn't, and it was just kind of, you know, they just threw it in, but it's kind of neat how the events of this connect to the sequel in a way you wouldn't think. There's some water areas over there, those are pretty easy to miss. This temple has a ton of loot in it, so make sure you uh, pick up all the loot. And then uh, there's a couple hidden fall spaces like this one that you see me in, so make sure you look for those as well. This is where the uh, the mechanism is that we need to lower the draw drawbridge. So in this area also, I think this is the other area that has mages in it. So be careful for the, the mages that the, the one patrols right down the hallway and there's one right there. The fire one just kind of stands still, I think, for the most part. There's the air one right there. I warn you, do not take up arms against me. Protect me! Shadows reveal your cowardice, intruder. So all you gotta do is uh, highlight the item in your inventory, right click on the lever spot, and then once the lever's on, then click it again to activate it, and then it'll 
come move the uh, the bridge over, which makes it easier to get across the gap that we need to get across to uh, access the path to the fire talisman. So basically, if you're looking at the map, you want to go south first, you know, follow that path like I did to grab the lever, you know, through the through the camp, pick up the keeper medallion that you need anyway. Um, and then come back and then go west to go to the fire talisman. It's marked, uh, the way that you find your way in this level 2 is, you know, not only the map, but also the symbols that you'll see, you know, the symbol for, like, like that looks like the wheat symbol is, like, the market, and that's, like, the center of the map. To me. There's one of the masks they're talking about. <sighs> Just a really cool level in terms of like atmosphere and detail, like the the paintings on the wall that look like you know cave paintings and things like that. Just gives it a really really nice atmosphere and. You know, the game of, the, the lore of Thief is already mysterious kind of enough. You get, you know, lore from uh, notes that you find and guard conversations that you hear and cut scenes. But, you know, for the most part, Thief doesn't dump its lore and, you know, dump its exposition, which is one of the things I really like about the game is it keeps it to like, what you should know and it keeps what is interesting to the game, uh, to the story. And then the rest is just, you know, some of it's left for you to fill in, but... I just love that whole, you know, the idea of this, you know, this city that's already strange and, you know, kind of fantasy, steampunk, you know, mystical, and then you have, like, this, you know, lost, you know, dead civilization on top of it, so it's just, like, you wonder what, you know, what exactly this place was like completely while it was, you know, functioning. I thought there might be something up there, but I don't think there is. Bunch of water arrows that you might need. This is the second campsite with the second medallion. Some arrows there as well. Let's see, objective complete. We have both medallions, so to fill that, we just gotta grab the talisman, and I think we still might need some loot. Creepy. <sighs> Make sure, like, you uh, see me doing there, you turn around, pick up that diamond and those two fire arrows. This is the lost city. And there is the main tower it's where the uh, no fire talisman is. So this is uh, coming up on the end here. There's a ton of those fireball enemies. You want to avoid those. Make sure you have your water arrows out. I definitely recommend buying all the water arrows at the beginning if you have the gold. It's pretty much the most valuable thing in this mission between you know dousing torches with areas that have mages and you know fighting those fireballs. Incredibly useful. I would say don't even waste your money too much on, you know, flash bombs or gas arrows. Plus, you can kill uh, mages in this mission. So even if you're playing an expert, you can just uh, pull out your sword and pull out your arrows, your bow and arrows. This is kind of nerve-wracking. You have to kind of shimmy across this uh, ledge here, and then you want to be looking for this side right here. And this is where um, you gotta shoot the rope arrow so you can climb up to the window. 
can see I have a lot of trouble. For some reason, it just doesn't want to doesn't want me to grab the, the rope for some reason. I don't know why. I think sometimes it's a physics thing, like a physics collision thing. It just is registering me like hitting the rope because the rope is like an actual like object. It's not it's not a quick time event or it's not a uh, what do you call it like a contextual thing. It's actually you know physically a rope like you can call it, like it's fully textured in the environment. So I think it's. If I had to guess, I would say it's just an issue of me colliding with the rope, like my weight versus the rope's weight, and it's not taking the grab into account. I thought you'd just shoot a water arrow into the towels, but you don't. You just pick it up. So yeah, so now that's all that's left is to get back to where we were. So I'm going to actually cut back to on my way out here because you just have to follow your way back, you know. So you have to go south, back south, back to the middle, and then north out there out the level and you can see it's the cave where we saw the spiders at the beginning and we're done so that's it uh yeah but overall i like the lost city it's probably not on my it's not on my favorites list but it's also not on my you know dislikes list either you see 270 225 70 there out of like about 2800 so you know did pretty good on the loot um but yeah so thank you so much for watching uh, make sure to let me know what you think. Uh, any ideas or suggestions, let me know. All right, take care.